Hello and welcome to episode 44 of Shared Discovery, the show and podcast dedicated to sharing the many exciting and enjoyable aspects of games, gaming, and Magic the Gathering. I'm your host, Victor, and today I'm once again joined by my uh, gamer co-host, Ron. How are you doing? Good, Victor. How are you doing? I am doing great, because we are back with another Magic the Gathering episode. Yeah, we sure are. Because we talked about last time Magic for Beginners, and we said in that episode, episode, go plural, those dual episodes, that we need to talk about our favorite form of Magic, Commander. Of course. I mean... What's what's more essential to our magic experience than Commander, right? Yeah. So we're going to talk about the format of Commander, everything that it has to hold, everything that we like about it, the history, where does it come from. Right. But what have you been up to recently, Ron? Um, not a whole lot. Just trying to make friends, you know, mm-hmm. talking to a lot of people, staying active, uh, working out, trying to be healthy. Uh, it sounds yeah. like... That sounds like a motivational speech. Uh, <laughs> Listen, get out there, make friends, be healthy, be active. Just do it. Get those goals, just do it. Get, but, get those goals. No, I, I respect that, man. That's awesome. What games have you been playing? Games. You've been finding time for those? Games, magic, of course. You always have time for you magic. You crushed me recently in a spectacular way. I always love being beaten by my own deck. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. I love that. It was so fun. Which one was that? The Villainous Wealth deck. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. it steals your deck and plays it yes, against you. Yes, that's the goal of the deck. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's a good time. Marvelous. I love it. That was one. Of you, that was your second deck you ever made? Yeah. And so it's re- reborn after five years? Whoa, five years? I mean, last year. <laughs> okay. Sorry to throw... Throw that on you. <laughs> wow. No, that's... I like the rebirth, though. It's got a glow up, too, because yeah. you spiked that power level. Like, intensely. <laughs> Immensely, intensely. You know, it's part of the rebuild I'm going yes. through right now. Heck yeah, rebuild those guns, re- those muscles, rebuild those decks. And the mind follows. It's like, you know, bigger and better. And I'm noticing way. those play patterns are getting better, too. Right? You're leveling up, dude. I'm this is the down. year of Ron. <laughs> the year of Ron. Let's get it. <laughs> Let's get it. Heck yeah. yeah. What have you been playing, Victor? Of course, played Magic. We had a Magic night the other night. Impromptu. It was super fun. Super fun. I lost every game, and it was so fun. I won every game, and it was so fun. <laughs> Did you really? Yep. You won every game. I won every My game. man. Even you, the two-headed giant. You need those games. Yep. Me and Shane so brought cool. it home. Yeah, you one-punched me, and I had to leave. So I'm glad you, you pulled it off. <laughs> You and Shane got it. Let's go, dude. Oh, you wanted to leave anyway, so I, well, okay. I didn't want to leave. I just had. I <laughs> got the magic all night. Right, right. <laughs> but RuneScape has got its claws in me. I've been doing a nostalgia dive into the the number spreadsheet simulator that is RuneScape, uh, playing it in a way I've never played. It. Paying, well, not paying for it. Playing members. I'm not paying for it. If you get enough in-game gold, you can buy membership time. So I did that. So I've been playing members, making friends in the game. Yeah. I uh, just talked to a dude. He gave me. I gave him some arrows because he needed them. And then it led. We've been talking for a couple of weeks, and he's like, "Why aren't you a member?" I'm like, "I don't have enough money." And I did have enough money. I just wasn't ready yet. He's like, "How much you need?" I'm like, "I don't know, like four million gold." <laughs> He's like, oh, meet me at the Grand Exchange. And he just gave it to me. So I'm like, okay, well, I got to make money. I got to pay him back. And I was talking to him yesterday. He's like, ah, I'm in debt. I can't really buy expensive things. He's like, to who? I'm like, well, to you and the other guy. And he's like, oh, you don't have to worry about me. I have what? so much money. I was like, sweet. He just wanted a friend. He just wanted a friend. So it's been cool. There's been nice people. My very first day on, I'm just like level three or whatever i'm going to buy arrows train range mm. and i'm at the arrow shop and some guy's like hey you need arrows i'm like yeah dude and he's like stay here he comes back with like three hundred and fifty thousand gold worth of runes and arrows and armor and just a stack of gold I'm like people are so nice this is not how i remember this game <laughs> not at all <laughs> what is happening good samaritans man yeah, so the wow. generosity has been going up uh I got Savannah to play with me, and she was just cutting trees. And she's like, "I need an axe." The guy's like, "All right, here's four million gold." I'm like, what is this generosity? <laughs> so, been having a good time with it. Just experiencing parts of the games I didn't understand how to experience when mm-hmm. I was young. But that's been keeping me 
keeping me busy as it goes. I'm like 200 hours in, and that's just like 1% of the game. So Good to hear. It's a forever game. Yeah. Having a good time with it. Everybody needs a forever game. I think so. WoW has been it in the past, but I wanted to try my other MMO I started on. So. Gotcha. Yeah, it's been yeah. a good time. I got Chandler to play with me, too. So. Oh, got the whole group then. Yeah, and Vine just texted me today. He's like, hey, I'm starting at RuneScape again. <laughs> I'm like, all right, here we go. Wow. <laughs> Hopefully I don't fall off in the, in the next month, <laughs> like I tend to do with games. But Well, yeah. So it's fine. Goes. So that's the RuneScape talk. Magic, RuneScape, and watching Doctor Who. Ooh. Having a good time Ooh. with that. That's not a game, but it's super interesting. What season are you in? Season four. Mm-hmm. Some good well, stuff. season four of New Who. Yes. For those who know the show. Right. Because I'm watching the reboot. Uh, old Who? I don't know how to feel about that stuff, personally. Personally? I didn't even bother because they've heard people like you say that a lot. Yeah, I like New Who, but that's fine. Yeah, I like it. So we're having a good time. But enough of that. Let's talk about magic. But first, we got to do some housekeeping. Yeah, let's clean the place up. See some dust. So if they want to email us, Ron, where can they do that? What's their What's our email? What is our email? I think it's sharediscoveryshow at gmail.com. It sure is. So if you want to tell us your favorite commanders, your favorite format, tell us why modern's better than commander. Yeah, send us some slander. Send us that slander. I mean, we'll read it off. <laughs> Uh, you can check us out on YouTube if you want to see our faces, watch our gameplay videos. You can see us on Instagram. We keep you up to date on the schedule there. Been kind of slacking on that, but uh, it's there. It's there. Uh, you know, mm-hmm. and you can message us there if you want as well. And we do have more D&D coming up after this episode, actually. Holy cow. 44, so the next three or four episodes, Uh-oh. the next three, four hours are going to be our D&D, so... That's coming back up. I'm excited to touch that again. Uh, I can't wait to get started writing. <laughs> what happens next? <laughs> well, you got a week or two. You got some time. <laughs> I'm sweating. Why am I sweating? So hey, much? we're still in the starter dungeon. Don't worry. Right. Kobolds, right. goblins. What could be easier? Easy peasy. Yep. You've run those so many times. So roll some dice, talk some talk. Mm-hmm. Yep. And I do that every weekend. Oh, how could I forget? I've been playing D&D every weekend. Every too. weekend. Yeah, I haven't. Yeah, it's like three times a month. Maybe there's one weekend a month we don't play, but it's been very consistent. That's great. Mm-hmm. Consistency is the key. It is the key. It's great. I the, Before this campaign that's about to hit 20 sessions, never mm-hmm. made it past three. So I Whoa. broke the curse. Yeah. So this is so much fun. But Commander, derailing. And so I have a question for you. Okay. To get back on track. Yeah. Get back on the rails. Back on the How rails. did you start playing Commander? How did I start playing Commander? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Didn't you get me into it? Yeah, I just wanted you to say it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, uh, I think you uh, were like, hey, dude, play this way. It's better than standard. And I'm like... You know, it's a, it's a good loop because you... you were the one that first exposed me to magic. Oh, yeah. Came over and you're like, my brother has these cards. I was like, ooh, those are cool. And we played them. And then we played them throughout the years. And so it's cool that you got me into magic. I got you into Commander. I like that. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. It's like poetry. It like rhymes or something. You know? You're the poet. (laughs) Thank you. You're the poet here. Is it like poetry? (laughs) Uh, Anyone lived in a little how town with up so floating many bells down. Right? Poetry? Yeah, that oh. sounds like poetry. Okay. Man, where does that come from? Wait. What are we talking about? <laughs> I don't know. We're so you got talking. me into so Commander. So I got you into Commander. What was your first Commander? So I really liked board games and stuff. And that was your like way in. Is It's like, oh, it's like Magic the Gathering, but a board game. Mm. And my first Commander was... Uh, I thought it was really gimmicky and kind of a meme Commander. <laughs> That's why I chose it. Is It seemed kind of silly at the time, and it was... Locust God, which mm. is all about drawing lots of cards and randomness and luck. It's mm-hmm. just a good time. Yeah, draw cards, make bugs. Yep. Swarm them. That's solid. Yeah. And it's improved over the years. It looks different, but it's still around. Yeah, I've been tweaking it continuously for five years now. Heck yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm. The way I got into it was actually the command zone. Mm-hmm. So I, was play- I had cards saved. 
I sold a lot, but I had cards saved to just a 60 card deck to play with Chandler. And then I was like, oh, this is fun. I wonder, let me look up some videos. And then a Command Zone video came on, the biggest Commander YouTube channel uh, out there. I think they're the second biggest Magic channel at all. Yeah, they're great. Um, Check them out great. if you yeah. don't know about them already. Mm -hmm. You're missing out. Yeah, they've probably already done this episode better than we have. <laughs> but still stick around. We yeah. got some, I have some good insights here. Uh, but they got me into it, and yeah. they, and from there, uh, the Jumbo Commander DJ, I watched some of his videos and mm -hmm. made some of his decks. The first deck I have doesn't isn't alive anymore. I have all the cards. They've re, I've repurposed them, but it was a black and red deck, Goblin deck, Grenzo the Dungeon Warden. Yeah. So not alive anymore. It's gone in different directions. Mm -hmm. But that's how it really I got started was through the YouTube, mm -hmm. through the Command Zone. But like we like to do around here, the Socratic method, we like to define what we're talking about. Yes. So what is Commander on? What is Commander? The Socratic method. Right? Commander is based on building a 100 card singleton deck centered around a single legendary creature, also known as your Commander. With the deck limited to only using cards that match color identity of your commander which you know magic gathering color identity it's pretty it's printed on the card it's right in front of you it's right there right it's typically two to six players mm -hmm. in a free-for-all style but um, alliances and backstabbing and table talk is welcome mm -hmm. and each player starts at 40 health so a little more space to play a little more room lasts longer mm -hmm. And it's more of a board game feel. I yes. Think. Yeah. Well, and so a little bit of nuance there. So mm -hmm. singleton, we talked about defining this. Right. Singleton, it means that you can only have one copy of a card in your deck. And that is true for every card except for basic lands. Because you can't play without lands. Yeah. And so if it's non-basic land, you can only have one copy. But island, mountain, swamp. Lanes Forest, you can have as many copies in your deck as you want to make sure you can still play the game. And then as far as color identity goes, uh, think of a card that ha costs a red and a white. That means you can only have red and white cards in your deck. Yeah. And But the little bit of nuance there with color identity, say a card costs two white mana, but it has an ability that has blue mana to activate the color identity for that deck would be white and blue because the legendary creature the commander that you have has both of those colors represented somewhere on its card so that's for it to function even yeah. you need those colors exactly so. so that is the nuance there with that but that's essentially it it is a board game you slap down and you using your game pieces to come out on top of king of the hill you better believe it and it's so much fun. Anyway. It, is, it very much is, and we'll get into some of those reasons here, but I, I looked up the history of where the Commander came from. I thought it was interesting. What, like, it didn't come from nowhere. It, didn't, right. it wasn't part of the game when it was created. It's been around for a while, but I've only personally recently heard about it. Me too. So for, in research for this, I found out it's much older than we think. It's actually the first forms of Commander came out in 1996. That seems... When did the game come out? 1993. So, real soon. Very soon after. Real it soon. was made by two fans, actually. Mm -hmm. Parallel, but not together. These fans created something... Ooh. Each made something that looked like Commander. I love Parallel Thought. Yeah. It's a cool concept. So, Jesus M. Lopez, he wrote to the... Magic the Gathering publication at time, the time, The Duelist, mm -hmm. to share with the magazine a format he called Elder Dragon Legend Wars. Oh, okay. So it was more complicated than Commander, we know. It forced decks to have eight of each land in the deck, as well as designating certain creatures as warlords and captains with their own unique rules about them. But it still had the legendary creature mm -hmm. limited to one in each deck. So that 
was the first form of it, right? It seemed kind of complicated. Similar, more so, it was similar to that, where it was free for all, the legendary creature, the warlord at the front of it, right? But like the captains, it's like uh, more simulation a little bit, a little more like trying to be realistic instead yeah, of fun. Yeah, I see. Yeah. Trying to represent a war. Instead of... A board game. Right. <laughs> and so at the same time, that same year, Adam Staley... Staley? Staley designed Elder Dragon Highlander as a unique variant with his playgroup in Alaska. Whoa. And this this name, this one is what stuck, right? Yes. We still know Commander as Commander slash ADH. Right, Elder Dragon Highlander. And this comes from the Elder Dragon cycle that came out in Legends. Okay. So there are five three-color legendary dragons that will had to, had to be commanders. So the original commander forced you to use one of those five dragons okay mm -hmm. so limiting but you know you still have 100 cards in your deck so yeah exactly right. and so this is this is the one that stuck but it was interesting to me that two similar ideas formed that same year mm -hmm. they never talked to each other adams uh, has gone on record saying he never read the duelist article wow it that's just just kind of happened. What a coincidence, yeah. And so for this, they were called generals for the deck. I like that. And then it was based on the Highlander, which is a 1986 cult classic fantasy film with the tagline, there can only be one. Have you seen it? Highlander? Yeah. yeah. I've never seen it. So this is going to make people kind of angry. They're not great films, but... They're fun. The fun one? Yeah. Okay. yeah. Oh, this is my next question. I always ask, does it hold up? Uh, mm -hmm. no, is it worth a watch? Uh, a scale of one to ten? Five, maybe. Uh, okay, all right. It's not going to change your life, but mm -hmm. it's something to put on on a Sunday evening. Sure. Mm -hmm. Still has its legacy, though. We sure still, does. We still talk about it. I think it. the legacy is way bigger than the movie. But uh, Sorry, go on. Huh. Yeah. yeah. There's a lot of things that that happens for, I think. Mm-hmm. And so this tagline is actually in uh, the Command Zone. In their gameplay videos called Game Nights, they always say, only one may stand. Only one may stand. I like that. That's kind of nice. So, Elder Dragon Highlander became the preferred variant over the Elder Dragon Legend Wars, which is a sweet name too, by the way. Kind of wordy. but Pretty wordy, but pretty sweet. And I, so I can understand how this one... One last word rolls off the tongue better. You can understand how this stuck, especially the last restrictions. And High, Highlander was a pretty popular movie. Oh, true, yeah. So tons of people knew what it was, especially in, like, I don't know, more gaming circles mm. and stuff, mm. like the mm. fantastical stuff. Yeah. I feel like sticks more with us uh, I think nerds. So. You know? I think so, yeah. Think about the Dune that we just watched. Dune. Nerd stuff. And Nerd we love stuff. it. We love it. Lisa and Al Gaib. Anyway, sorry. Ender's about. Game, right? Yeah. That's in that vein. You have me read that book. Thank you for the recommendation. Solid yeah. book. Yeah. So how did this go from a fan game, fan-made format, to officially recognized as by Wizards to the most popular format in Magic? Where, who bridged that gap? Who bridged the gap? <laughs> is that going to be Sheldon Mennery? It sure. Our man, yes. the legend, the myth, the 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 head honcho, the godfather of EDH and Commander, as they call him. Godfather, mm -hmm. the real Hefe, right? <laughs> uh, you know, after some time, EDH made its way to Mr. Sheldon. Mm -hmm. A former what fifth level yeah, competitive the highest level he judge. knew everything in and out. There weren't many people that actually made it to this level mm -hmm. of judge. I think Mark Rosewater made it to this level too, of course but there was a handful of people, so he knew his stuff about the game through and through. He knows the game better than most people, absolutely, than some of the creators of the game. That's oh, definitely wild. Uh, and like we said, the, where the name came from, uh, he played EDH with other judges, like casually, in between rounds yeah. at competitions, and uh, just for fun, right? To fill the space. It wasn't competitive. Mm -mm. It was to just relax and play with your more, um, what is it, like 
cards that don't see play in competitive yep. and things. Exactly. Right, stuff that's sort of fallen to the side or are duds. Uh, and he did that in 2000. Wait, no, he... That came to Featured him. it in an yeah. article in Yeah, he wrote his own article about it in 2004 so more people could learn about it. So he picked it up at some point I th- from yeah, 96. I think early 2000s, end of the 90s yeah. there, he picked it up and just mm-hmm. was playing it. He was like, this is great. I need to tell people about this. Yeah, <laughs> this is great. Uh, he re- he t- got a hold of it, like you said. He refined the rules. As a rules judge will. Yep, and he... <laughs> And uh, he saw the limitation of the Elder Dragons, and he opened up the number of commanders available, and he called it, uh, like, generals and stuff, and uh, didn't want it limited to just the Elder Dragons. Mm -hmm. And he headed up the Rules Committee until his untimely passing in 2023, just last year, or dating our episode right there. Uh, He's known as the Godfather, the Grandee, right, Mm -hmm. of... EDH and Commander. Yes. So thank you, Sheldon. Yeah. Rest in peace. Without you, we wouldn't have Commander in the format we have. He was a I real know. one. He was. He mm-hmm. really was. He he shaped the format, and we have it in a way, in a capacity that we do now because of him. Because he eventually got it to Scott Larrabee at Wizards. Sweet. So Wizards of the Coast. He was the Pro Tour manager, and. This happened about 2008, so over the next few years, he he worked to actually make it an official format that they changed the name to Commander. Uh, and okay. the first products were released in 2011. And they changed that name because they wanted to avoid legal issues with the Highlanders legal team. The Highlanders legal team? Is that like a sports team? Or? <laughs> does sound like a sports team the literal highlanders from scotland or something <laughs> yeah like what the clans of scots are gonna <laughs> take them to court yeah i guess so this sounds like a rugby team or something it must be <laughs> who are the specific highlanders he's worried about i need to know we is it just like know. a They're dude gonna track him down it's like a handful of highlanders <laughs> yeah, that are just dude. like ah, i if we ever catch this guy we'll bust him <laughs> up <laughs> You put your, you put our name on a magic product, you're done for. <laughs> you're done, son. We're coming to America for you. So they changed the name to Commander, and thus changing generals to Commanders. And in 2011, they released five three-color precons. What did the Scottish have against Magic: The Gathering? I don't know. We need to figure. We need to tackle this. <laughs> uh, I really wonder. Got to figure it out. <laughs> Is it too windy or something to play the game? Like, I don't know. I've never been to Scotland. I've never been either. Well, time to go to Scotland. (laughs) Let's let's do it. Edinburgh, here we go. And so now we're here. Now we're here. And um, Sheldon, he was the rules... uh, He headed the rules committee and created the rules committee. So the the bans that exist in the game um, are because of him. And their philosophy is fun first and trying not to overban things because... So there are 79 banned cards. That's um, pretty low. Out of how many cards do we have? Uh, as of March 2024, there are tw- uh, 27,000 unique cards in Magic the Gathering. That's what? not even a percentage of them. <laughs> yeah. So that doesn't even hit one. That's a fraction of it's a, a percent. a fraction of a percent. So their philosophy is to ban the things that are busted and make for unfun games, but not overdo it because they want people to have the conversations and play with the cards they like. That's the, the theory for the format. And uh, uh, another part of the theory of the format, too, is the uh, like the z- rule zero conversation, the oh, session yeah. zero, the pre-game conversation mm-hmm. where you get to discuss, like, do we accept the... The ban list, mm-hmm. like it, oh yeah, you can always sit down and say, "Hey, that ban list exists, but as a play group, is it okay if I play one yeah. of those cards?" I have a friend in my play group in Kalamazoo that he plays a Braids deck. Mm-hmm. Braids is a banned card, yep. but because it's not super powered, it's not going to turn one win. It's like oh, turn five or six, it'll start doing stuff, mm-hmm. right? So. That's That's kind of, and kind of how I am is fine. let me play with it. Let me see for myself if it's unfun to play against. Yeah. You know? Right. And if it is, I'm like, okay, I have an excuse to say no. There's nothing like experience <laughs> to teach yep. you what's up. Or if there is it, 
that rule zero conversation to say mm -hmm. how strong of decks are we playing? Are we playing with banned cards? Are we going to play casual, funny, mm -hmm. serious? How are we going to play? The rule zero conversation. Rule zero fits in with those banned cards as well. Mm -hmm. But Ron, I like statistics. You love I statistics. I like to provide some of these statistics and it's so easy for magic. There's so many numbers. Woo. It's and a math game, right? It's a ma it literally is. <laughs> <laughs> I was reading on Reddit that last week some kid uh, was taught magic by his dad bringing his cards. He was struggling at, magic, uh, at math in kindergarten and he's like ah oh, well let me teach my kid magic and just slap some magic cards in front of him and he understands math now it's amazing what <laughs> interest will do for your attention mm -hmm. you know yep. you add those cards to the numbers and suddenly the numbers mean so much you add more. fun art and flavor and in an engaging way and there's context things back to our fun episode right and there's change constantly happening numbers are going up and down mm -hmm. and it's exciting right like ooh, this number can't go down because that's my health it's grabbing your attention that's a big thing with learning mm -hmm. math is it's so hard to focus because mm -hmm. it's often boring but in this game doing math is fun because that gets you to the outcome of winning you, of cool things happening you just said doing math is fun what? Mathematical. <laughs> right, let's do some math, Ron. Mathematical. Okay. You ready? Here's some statistics. Yeah. Okay, so from colorless, no colors. No colors. To five colors. Five colors. White, blue, black, red, and green. There are 32 different color combinations possible for a commander deck. Okay. At the gate, step one. For playing commander, step one for making a commander deck, you have 32 options. Right out the gate. Boom. Wide open. Okay, where are we going? Let's pick <laughs> one. I'm going to make a, a red deck. So let's pick what's, you know, grabs you, what sticks with you, right? Uh, Chandler. That's yeah, that is, that is a red commander. <laughs> it is a choice that you can make. <laughs> <laughs> and so from there, mm -hmm. we know that you need a legendary creature. Asterix. There are a few other things that can be commanders, like a couple artifacts, some planeswalkers, but for the most part, you're going to use a legendary creature. And as of the recording of this episode, there are over 2,100 legendary creatures that can be your commander. That's a lot. Which is the numbers even higher once you do lump in those planeswalkers and you do lump in the other odd cards that can be Thousands. Like artifacts. Thousands of options, but the options keep going from there. They keep going. Because there are commanders that have the word partner on them, meaning that if you have a commander that has partner, you can have another commander in your command zone that also has partner. So you can have two commanders, right? So this breaks the single legendary rule, but there are a handful of these cards that have partner on them, and putting those together, they're over... 1,500, 1,500 partner combinations that can be your commander. Uh, the options keep keep going they up. They keep going up. Keep going up. <laughs> I feel like I'm going to keep saying this. Yeah, so we're kind of getting getting overloaded, but we'll, we'll, we'll teach you how to pick your commander. Don't worry. Don't worry. Cool. I was okay. getting worried for a second there. So then, a variation of partner mm -hmm. of backgrounds, and this comes from this comes from the uh, Baldur's Gate, the T and D theme set, where you the Dungeons and Dragons Dungeons and Dragons set where you choose a legendary creature, and it'll say choose a background. So you'll choose like folk hero, or sword coast sailor, or cultist, and both you can, and those are enchantments. So you have your legendary creature, and you have an enchantment that background in the command zone as your commander. So there are 27 commanders and 25 possible backgrounds, leading to 728 possible commander background combinations for your commanders. Wow, so you could choose a single commander, a partner commander, or a commander plus an enchantment, which is a background. And, and that's just the three starting points right yep. is you know this this and that and each one of those has thousands or hundreds of choices yep. inside of those choices okay i'm yep, tracking yep, yep, yep. i'm following okay it gets more complex i didn't even do the math on this because how 
But uh, there are nine companions. Uh, These companions sit next to your commander in a zone called the companion zone, and they can be there as long as your deck meets a certain condition. One of the conditions is all of your permanent cards in your deck have to be three mana or above, or all of your cards in your deck have to be odd mana cost. All of your permanents have to have activated abilities. So if your deck meets that condition, so you, your commander meets that condition, and all the cards in the deck meet that condition, condition you can have the companion there changing what all you also have access to essentially a second or third commander i don't i don't know how to do the math <laughs> I, I i really don't <laughs> it's huge the possibilities are approaching infinite yeah. what so if you like Commander, you're you're in a good place because Wizards of the Coast likes you too. They love me. They love you because in 2023, there were 395 unique Commanders introduced into the Commander format. Which I think 20, 25%... This is a statistic I don't have, but I was seeing in the comments. It's but like, that, yeah. I think like 25% of all of the commanders that exist have been introduced in like the past five years. That was the math yeah. I was just doing in my head there. Because Wizards is about... like, let's go. People like this stuff. People are buying them. Like meta cakes. Meta cakes. Yeah. Just hand over fist. Come on. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> and so we already said this last statistic. So think about all of those combinations that can be in your command zone. They're just always sitting there. You always have access to a commander. Commander and its partner, a commander and its background, commander and its partner, background, and a potential companion. And then you have over 27,000 unique cards that you can shove into those decks. Equaling a 100 card deck. You, this game, completely customizable. Like no other. No, no Just other. The width and breadth, the depth, yeah. the you can go as deep as you want, shallow mm -hmm. as you like. Just you can pull from recent stuff, or you can look at everything, the whole dearth of magic cards, all twenty-seven thousand of them. Like which, it's like, I think this is why we've been able to play so long. Yeah, it's impossible for to lose the novelty. You're always gonna see something new every single time. Even there are decks that haven't changed in five years but I'm still seeing new things in them every game and even within individual commanders I've seen different takes on them mm. that send them off into like ideas I've never even thought exactly. of exactly right like that's a, comes to mind there are goblin decks right mine's beat face yours throw goblins at face they just explode in a big yeah. fireball right yeah. so you get to completely customize so I wanted to throw these statistics out here mm -hmm. and just show you how wide open how wide open Magic the Gathering is. Hopefully that doesn't overwhelm you, but we'll, we'll, we'll show you how to like narrow it down a little bit. Starting out with the Wild West of card yes. games here, but we're going to bring it down. Bring it, shave it down. Yeah. Shave it down. Because at the bit. end of the day, it's only 100 cards, and there are ways to, to have good starting points. But I think it's important to know, what, okay, before we do that, but why do you play Commander? It's fun. That's fun. Yeah. Okay. All, All right. right. Wrap it see up. You. See Bye, you. everybody. <laughs> see you next time. Next time. Oh, but seriously, <laughs> besides fun. So what is fun about Commander is probably a better question. Right. What is fun? Why even play it? Why pick it up? Mm -hmm. um, I would say with this, with these statistics laid out here in front of me, the amount of cards, the amount of commander options, and then options for commanders. Mm -hmm. And options for the options for commanders, yeah. right? Just the sheer customizability. I'm thinking like freedom of expression is king in Magic the Gathering. That, that's where I landed too. Mm -hmm. You know, I was looking at these reasons and I had just done the statistics and mm -hmm. I was like, what does this represent other than being able to express yourself how you want to? Right. From color to play style. To, to the command, like everything you choose is you putting yourself into the game. And each card has variations. Oh, yeah. 
Let's go through this. Yeah, let's go through, <laughs> let's go through it. Let's go okay, through it. So not... Starting point, color. Color. So this is the five colors, mm -hmm. right? Each one of them, we've done an episode on this, is mm -hmm. like aligned with types of people. Yep. So boom, what type of person you are? Pick your colors. Let's find out. Personality, your play style. Color can shape that. Mm -hmm. And there's even like off play styles that that color is not normally supposed to do, but within mm -hmm. that color. So yeah. there's even variety in within your color mm -hmm. space, right? And I know people, this is like what, the Johnnies, the, the people that like the art? Yes, right? the that are flavor. Just like, I, didn't, I don't care about the mechanics, I like green. Mm -hmm. Green makes me feel good. And that's a totally valid way to play this right? game. I want to put card on table. Play game. <laughs> yeah. Yes, green, let's go. Green, let's go. And mm -hmm. so it's funny, I helped someone get into the game recently and then they know zero about it, but I'm like, okay, I'm going to tell you five colors. Tell me what stands out to you. Mm -hmm. And I said it, and they said, well, black sounds like death and destruction. I'm like, you are absolutely correct. Here's a black deck ding, for ding, you. Ding. Yeah. They had a great time because that's what black does. Death and destruction and horror creatures, right? The and commander it, is like a skeleton vampire. And, and it has a good time. Good time. Mm -hmm. Yep. You know, Good time, not always a long time, but you're gonna have a good time. Mm -hmm. And so that's a, from the beginning, from the color pie, what Richard Garfield created. It's like you get to choose that choice, that expression. And then you dive a little bit deeper. Like, okay, I want to make a red deck. Mm -hmm. Who's gonna represent that for me? Chandler. Chandler. Who uh, represents red better than anybody? <laughs> Chandler. And Chandler actually is a card, folks. Yeah, it's literally it's a red legendary creature named Chandler. <laughs> uh, Cranko, you like goblins. Dr Laughless, you like dragons. Right. Kefnet, you like losing. Um. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah, have you, I think I've seen you win one time with that guy. It was a fluke. <laughs> <It's> a fluke. <laughs> Let's be we handed it to you. Lucky draw. That was top deck. <laughs> I drew it, and I won. It, and so, no skill on my part. You have the commander, whether you like the color or not. Sometimes you just you pick a commander because you're like, I want to play a dude named Chandler, or some, I want to play a big scary dragon, or I like the art of that one. I've played commanders simply because I like that art of that card. And oh, yeah. it, or a new art comes out for a legendary creature. I'm like, oh, I'll play that now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Let's crack it open. I uh, just got a new commander for one of my decks, and I was like, all right, let's get after it. Let's go. Right. And so you that brings us to our next point, art and bling. You get to choose the art that you have for each creature. Most cards, a lot of cards, I won't say most, a lot of cards have multiple versions. Mm -hmm. You can get foil versions. And it's not the most free form of expression on our list yeah. because the bling costs bling. It does cost bling, yeah. So that's a limiting factor. Yes. But it's there. It is an aspect, though, right? Foils, proxies, mm -hmm. artists, proofs, whatever it is. You right. get to choose. Or something I like to do is just the version. Even if it's not foil, I might like that symbol better. Because mm -hmm. every card has the um, set symbol. Set symbol. Mm -hmm. And so you might have a border preference. Oh, I only play old border cards. White border. White border only. <laughs> I do want to make an all white border mm -hmm. deck at some point. Just the people hate it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I put uh, white border cards in my decks often, and I, I always get comments. Ooh. They're like, "What is that?" <laughs> oh, you you don't remember the good old white border era in the nineties? <laughs> Yay! Doesn't everyone love the white border? You know, in theory, white border was good because they wanted to use white border to show that it was a reprint set. Oh, that's kind of cool, yeah. actually. So, in theory, it's an awesome concept. Yeah. Like, just seeing all reprints with, like, a slight color variation mm -hmm. on them would be kind of cool. Yeah. People like their uniformity. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Got you. <laughs> yeah. But I tell you what, if you give me a white board or a black lotus, it's okay. That's fine. Really? You would use it. Just rip it up. Oh, and... Uh, I bet, I bet you, a ripped up Black Lotus would still pay the bills. <laughs> At least a grand, right? <laughs> it would still pay the rent for this month. <laughs> cardboard. It's cardboard. Anyway. Oh, I really like this statistic, Ron. So, 
EDH Rec yes. is a deck building website for Commander. I love it. It's it's just a nice shorthand where you type in a Commander, you type in a card, and you can see what other people have built with that mm -hmm. and the decks that they've made. It favors newer cards, but you can manipulate it mm -hmm. in ways to show you information and like weird, rare stuff. Yeah, I think options. it's a really good starting point for deck building. Exactly. Like I like to go there, see what people are doing, mm -hmm. the ideas they're having. I'm like, oh, okay, I, they're using that concept. Let me go to a search engine. Let me go to Scryfall, see what else I can find like that. Mm -hmm. So, But EDHREC has a bunch of statistics, and one of the measures that they have is deck theme. Deck theme. What access is the deck playing on? Is it aggro or life gain or infect, right? EDH Rex says that there are nearly 100 distinct play styles for how to play the game. Nearly 100 distinct play styles for how to play. I don't think I could even name half of them. I don't think so either. Because mm. <laughs> I was like, there's a few, right? But it just kept going. Like, Infect and Angro and Life Pain and Aristocrats and, and Burn and, and Mirth. Pods and 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 rebels and tribal or tribal. typal, what's it's, it's called now. And I like tribal better. Me too. I like to think of myself as a tribal. Yeah. I still, you know. I, I dig it too. Emo tribe. I, I understand where they came from. And they even said like, this is what Wizards is changing it to internally. Mm -hmm. But if people are still going to use the terms, they're still going to use it. But it's the same thing. So that's what they use. Typal. Uh, so 100 distinct play styles and all of those combinations we had you can choose a play style that fits through you you can choose I don't want to do combat I'm going to do pillow forwarding leave me alone yep. <laughs> leave me alone I'm going to kill all of you with indirect magic exactly are you a slow player are you an aggressive player right do you like to make deals do you not want to talk to people are you competitive there are yeah, there's a play style for you. Over a hundred of them, mm -hmm. so... And so out of those play styles, you can express yourself in the power level. Yeah, I mean, where do you want to hang out? Do you just want to do it with friends, chill out on Friday nights or whatever? Or do you want to get sweaty with it? <laughs> you want to get into the nitty-gritty mm -hmm. and, like, the mechanics yeah. and really just dive in? It's yeah, all there. I've heard some real sweaty conversations about this. And so when we talk about that, we're talking about the competitive players. And what's interesting to you, uh, uh, to that point of doing mm. a casual Friday night, mm. is the competitive players have done it so long. I've heard them on the podcast like, yeah, we just drink and have fun while we play competitive mm -hmm. on Friday. Because they've got it down pat. They've got it down, yeah. They've got the stuff around. Mm -hmm. They know the meta. Mm -hmm. So so are you trying to play at max power level, or mm -hmm. are you trying to play a deck that... You know, I was trying to, I was thinking about making a deck recently that has the word burn in all of its cards, names. That's pretty cool. So I thought that probably wouldn't be a very strong deck. No. Nope. So that would be on the lower spectrum, but you can customize, customizability. Where do I want to be at? How strong do my decks want to be? Mm -hmm. And how strong do I want to be within this play group? So that's a big thing as exactly. you move around play groups too. Mm-hmm. And we already talked about this next one, but you can't have a conversation about freedom of expression without the limiting factor to freedom. Budget. Budget. Money. Uh, you know, an artificial delineation between individuals within a society structure and hierarchy and, you know, class. The great general reinforcer. Mm-hmm. So, budget, unfortunately, will dictate how much of this expression you can do. Right. You're not, it's really hard to, if you want the game pieces, you don't want proxies, you don't want to print them off, you're a person that likes to have them, it's going to be harder to play on that competitive level. For sure, and I've struggled with that the entire time I've played Magic. I've always asked myself, like, is this cardboard that I'm buying... Like, literally paying $5 for a piece of cardboard with ink on it. Like, taking it down to just the basic level, mm -hmm. right? Is this a material good that I'm paying for? Is it worth it? 
And I've always struggled with that budgetary like yeah. constraint because I want to play at these like competitive levels and I mm -hmm. want to like push power and uh, play with really fun and unique cards. But a lot of those are going to be at those higher price points. Yeah. Like think about the one you just got out of on chance. Look, Brandon Rhystic Point. Study. Right? Rhystic Study. That's a $40 card. $40 card. And like, sure, I got it for cents on the dollar, but that's like... That's not normal. That was gambling. That's one card. Yep, that's, that's a single card. Uh, so 99 yeah. that I got to get together. So, and so that's up to you to decide. Know. This is, I guess there is a little bit of freedom if mm. you have the budget to decide how, like you said, how much is it worth it? How much is this card money I'm spending on cardboard worth it? For me, that's changed over time. It has... I used to have a limit of like 20, no more than twenty dollars a card, and it's just gotten lower and yeah, lower. Same. I'm like, and that creates like a challenging, creative space too, though, because then I'm putting pressure on myself to de design within a budget, mm -hmm. so that mm -hmm. I'm trying to squeeze as much power as I can out of like this this stone that yeah. only gives so much, right? Like, you got to maximize what you have and play with it, and that can be a really fun part of the it game is, too. Yeah. Because I remember when we first started playing, I was mm -hmm. like, I got extra money, let me throw it at it. And that led yeah. to a power spike for yeah. the group that was too high. And I was like, okay, let's pull it back, let's have more right. fun. And one of the best experiments I had was make a $25 deck. Mm -hmm. right? My mono red $25 yes. burn and hug deck. Incredible. And it's probably one of the best decks I have. Because I was fun, like, okay, the limitation sure. I have mm -hmm. here is that if I want to win games, I know I'm weaker because I have less money in the cards. So let me create a deck that pits the stronger decks against each other. Right. It recognizes its own weakness and uses that to mess with everybody else. Exactly. It's and I, great. I'm just so surprised. Every, I'm like, that's 25 bucks. How do I win these games? Oh, I don't. They win them for me. Yeah. You just <laughs> let everybody do the work. Yeah. And it's awesome because we've done that plenty of times where we do little mini tournaments where we make... $25 decks or $10 decks mm -hmm. and then just let's see who wins. Yep. Let's have some fun, right? And those have led to new play styles, yes. new ways to express ourselves. That's where your goblins came out of. Yeah, stuff that I never would have mm -hmm. thought to even build came out of these yeah. competitions. You learn new cards and new play styles. Mm -hmm. our, my, one of my favorite ones was building decks for each other. That was pretty good. Because I built you that... Um, the Janara deck, the three color one. Yeah, I love it. That one's so fun. We gave ourselves a, I think, a fifty dollar budget for mm -hmm. that one, and those are still around. We still play those. Uh, I don't play blue, meaning I don't make blue decks for myself. But Savannah made me a blue deck, so I have one. She's like, "You need one." I'm like, "Fine, fine." And I still play it. It's a fun deck. There's thirty two different color combinations. Do you really need a blue deck? No, I don't need a blue deck. <laughs> There's thirty. Without blue, decks. it goes down to uh, I think it trims it down to eighteen. Oh, that's, okay. that's plenty. That's still a substantial that's plenty. amount, right? I think I I I almost at all eighteen of the color combinations. I need um, Abzan, green, black, and white. Ooh, tough one. I think that's the last one I need, and then I have all of them. <laughs> yeah. I won't play blue because. It's just good. <laughs> I want to good. try a little. <laughs> right. Oh, so, and this, mm. you know, back to how we started the format. Mm -hmm. Thinking about the old, the history. Is like, This is a format where you can play your favorite cards. And your old favorite cards that have been just sitting there for a while. That you grew up on, that you used in standard. You can repurpose them. Nope. I mean... What am I going to do with all of these Grave Titans? This place had a Grave Titan. <laughs> you have a place that a Grave Titan? No, but, mm, you know, oh, metaphorically speaking. I was speaking, like, you, you I have want, Grave you Titans. Want, you want to share a lot? I have <laughs> Grave Titans. <laughs> I'll cry, I'll but cry. I will not be sharing. Oh, dang. <laughs> I'll be sharing when it hits you in the face. Exactly, the pain. <laughs> but this is what's so good about this format is other formats are so specific. Mm -hmm. And what's powerful at the time and what is the meta you'll hear that a lot what's in the meta what's the meta cake today you what's know? The, yeah what is it strawberry is it? today or what is it is yeah. it burn is it blue control mm -hmm. what's our cake exactly but 
commander says, as long as my playgroup is cool with it and it matches a power level, I can use whatever I want. And even if they're not cool with it, the rules say there's only 79 banned cards. So if I'm going to play a derpy card on there <laughs> that doesn't really help me, but I like the art, that's on you. And that's fun. I've done that. And I've, I've done it, cast it, took it out. Because it didn't do anything. <laughs> So when we think about why to play Commander, it really just becomes the umbrella of freedom of expression. Yeah, pretty simple. I feel like pretty straightforward, surprisingly so, but also big and like, it really... That was like 20 minutes. That was a huge, robust topic. It really is. And it's one of the things I love the most about Magic, really. Mm Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. you funneled it down. You picked your color. Yeah. You picked your commander. You know the play style. You went to EDH Rick. You picked the play style. Or heck, you didn't even know about commander, and now you want to play. How do you get started? Mm-hmm. Where, where would you start from? Um, well, I had an older brother, so mm-hmm. you know I had a bunch of cards given to me, or I acquired cards just from playing with Alan, my oh. brother. And then eventually he, you know, faded away. You came in, we're like, hey, let's do this thing. Uh, You have all these cards left over. Mm -hmm. Use what you have. You've got a thousand cards. That's a resource right there. We can make at least one moderately good, decent deck Mm -hmm. uh, out of these, right? Yeah. Let's slap something together. And that's that's sort of done many times, Mm -hmm. right? It's not going to be the most powerful as a curated thing. But it's going to be fun. And I've done that recently yeah. with a red and green deck. I've just grabbed cards I have around. It has a lot of holes, but I'm like, ooh, I love this card. I used to play yeah. this. Ooh, I love this card. I used to play this. And it's got that little more personal flavor yeah. to it, too, because it's all those cards you've been holding on to for years. And you're like, I don't use these. I have no use for these. Are they even usable? Mm-hmm. Well, Commander says they are. Yes. Which is awesome because it's the eternal format, is what they call it. You make a deck. You're gonna be able to play it again in five years. It's it 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 just works. Yeah, ladies and, and gentlemen, it just works. Just works, um, Houston. It just works. Mm-hmm. Let them know. Let them know. And so, uh, when we say how to start, we're talking about Magic players that are playing other formats, and we're talking about brand new players. Right. So, as a brand new player, we recommend to borrow cards yeah. you're learning for the first time. Oh yeah. Uh, my partner would borrow my Locust God deck mm-hmm. for uh, every game that we played for a while, just to sort of get a feel, get a grasp on things, mm-hmm. and figure it out. Which was a great starting point, I think. It's, mm-hmm. it's pretty complicated, but it's a deck that I really think grabbed them because when it pops off, it feels so good. It pops off. It pops off, and you're like, well, I need to do that more. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I think that was a good starting point. I think so too. That's a good, good choice there. And mm-hmm. so borrow from your friends. You, you, that's what I've done around here at the studio for people that want to learn. It's just like, like, it, like I said earlier in the episode, what's your favorite color? Try this deck. Hey, try this deck. I think you'll like it. Based on your personality, I think you'll like this. So, if you're an experienced commander player, feel, feel free to share. Yeah, get some people. Mm-hmm. And if you are like, oh, you just said there's so many options. I, how do I start? How do I pick a commander out of, out of 2,100 and or 1,500? You said there's partner, there's 1,500 partner there's commanders? There's backgrounds and companions. Oh my god. Dude. Partners and normals. Oh, that, that, I can't. That's too many choices. I'm not playing Magic. Whoa, 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 Period. whoa, whoa, we got you, we got mm. you, we got you. We got you. <laughs> there's a life server, life preserver we here. We got a life preserver. Just throw it out there. It's called... Precons, so pre-constructed decks, and these are made directly by Wizards, Wizards of the Coast. They make these decks with just about every set now. Mm-hmm. They used to make them once a year. <laughs> now it's every set, a little much, but they they vary in colors. They're usually two or three colors. You can sometimes find mono colors, but out of the box, they work. They come with uh, Life Tracker die, Life Tracker spin down, um, like paper spin life tracker, a deck yeah. box, the commander, and it's a playable deck that they have professionals test. I don't think they always worked though. 
No, no, no. They've gotten better. Yeah. Gotten, no, no. <laughs> I'm like, you've gotten way better in Asian in, in, in this current <laughs> year, in the past years, they've worked to make them a lot better. Which I appreciate. There are some that are just so good. Like this, uh, so this good. one behind me here, this Oskir deck, this red and white one. Mm -hmm. It's artifact deck. It is, it's so strong. It's probably the strongest precon I've played. And so they're getting a lot better than when they first came out in 2011 because they didn't really know the format either. They were just shoving 100 cards in a deck. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so the next thing I recommend how I got in the game is mm -hmm. watch content. Let, the Command Zone has hundreds of podcasts about how to make decks, why to play the format. Check out, check out Magic content. Oh, yeah, countless channels on deck builds or unique cards that people have overlooked, like just infinite mm -hmm. possibility. And then gameplay is a huge way because mm -hmm. you, especially on the command zone, they do it in like a reality show type way yeah. where new players, I've, I've heard from new players, it's really, they really like it because they know what's happening. They talk you through it and they announce what's going mm -hmm. on and they have cool graphics yep. and labels and they'll zoom in on cards and they have the cameras and all the special effects. Yes. It's Oh, it's so nice for learning. I think that probably helped Kaylee learn. I would say so. Because I remember you two would watch those, and I, I, I felt like an improvement after them watching that. Right. So uh, they work. Check those out. And, of course, EDH Rec. We've talked about this website uh, just recently, in like 20 minutes ago, 10 minutes. I don't know, time. Whoa. It's, it's relative. Good. It's relative. We have two minutes left. But EDH Rec is huge because you can look for a theme that you like. You can say, oh, I want to do red, blue. It'll list all of those. It'll show what's popular. Yeah. And it will give you recommendation for those cards. Go is it. Go Boros. <laughs> all right, Ron, at the bottom of the hour, let's do a little bit of self-indulgent speed run. What commanders do you play? What commanders do I play? Should I list them all off? Just uh, let's... Uh, do three, three to five for these favorites. Uh, Locust God has been mentioned. I enjoy Shu Yun, uh, One Punch Man. Yep. Um, Jinara is great when I want a specific strategy that it mm -hmm. does very mm -hmm. well. Then there's my uh, obsession deck, the Mirror deck, which is a typal or a tribal deck mm -hmm. that's Mir specific, which is just like a really pathetic type of creature. Type. Yep. I love it. Uh, the small stuff is where I like. Um, then there's the Morph deck, mm -hmm. Kadena, Silencer. Mm -hmm. And so what do you think and, like, yeah. the common themes, common colors are among those? I like being annoying and dragging <laughs> games out, true, 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 true. winning it in the late game yeah. or mid game instead of the early game. Uh, though I do have decks that try to attempt early game wins. Yeah. Most of my decks are going to be yeah later later on, and uh, like stall for time nice. types. Yeah, that's awesome. My let's see, I have Karn. It's mono red. Mm -hmm. I pass them around. We draw cards. I yeah. go to everyone. Mm -hmm. Goblins mono red. I like red. I got feather. I have a lot of Voltron decks. Yes. So I have a red and white equipment deck that I don't play much anymore. Uh, I have a green punch deck. I really like combat. If you can't tell, <laughs> he really likes combat. And then my favorite deck, probably oh, at the moment is my chaos deck. It just. Uh, Burn in chaos. It tries to make the game go quickly, and uh, yeah, that's where I'm at. Red is definitely my favorite color. White is probably the next uh, there. So red, white, green, black, and blue. And we're at the bottom of the hour, Ron. Look that's at it. That. Look at that. Cool. Well, thanks for joining me on Commander. It's fun to finally talk about this yes. after all these years. And thank all of you for listening to us about Commander. Thank you for BCTV for allowing us to talk about Commander for an hour. <laughs> this is amazing. If you have, want to tell us your favorite commanders, leave it in the comments Please. or email us at shouldDiscoveryShow. I want to see some cool commanders. Com. And uh, as we sign off, thank you for joining us in episode 44 of Shared Discovery. Please make sure to uh, have some fun, play some games, be nice to each other, and sign us off, Ron. Oh, you know, riches must be divided, but real wealth can be shared. See you next time. Bye. For